Well, good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in God's house with you today on this uh, beautiful winter Sunday. And um, we welcome you to our church and look forward to what God has in store for us this coming year. Um, We're going to begin our worship today with singing of For the Beauty of the Earth. Will you stand as we sing together? first Sunday of a new year. It's important for us to affirm our faith, and we're going to use the words today of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confirm our faith using this creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn is number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
You may be seated. Before we come to our prayer time this morning, I want to uh, recognize a family in the church who is desiring to join the church today, and that's the Schneg family. They're new residents from Ohio, and uh, I think their daughter came down first and was the pioneer that showed them where to come to. So <laughs> glad that you're here, and uh, Jim and Mary and Laura and Rhett. Rhett was, I think, I, well, I met him at the uh, uh, service we had uh, right before Christmas of the live nativity, and uh, he wanted to give his pastor a hug, and I'm, I still appreciate that. It got me through Christmas. But um, if y'all will stand this morning, and I'm just going to ask you this one thing. They come from United Methodist Church, so I just need to ask you this one thing, and as you do that in, in, in this body this morning, uh, will you be loyal to this United Methodist Church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If you will, say, I will. And welcome to First United Methodist Church. <laughs> Under normal circumstances, I don't know what you all normally do, but I would normally probably have them stand at the door maybe on the way out and let you greet them, but we can't do handshakes, but we may at least see, wave at each other and speak, so be sure and speak to them. Uh, Mary's already been involved in some things with music in our church, and we look forward to other involvement that this whole family will do. Thank you all so much. As we come to our prayer time, we want to remember folks in our community and in our church who are sick and who have lost loved ones. Uh, Anna Wallace this week passed away in uh, Chattanooga. She is uh, Nancy Baker's aunt. Uh, she's 97 years old. She was in a, a uh, nursing facility there. And Darrell Williams also this past week, uh, his funeral was yesterday. And uh, one of the... One of the blessings of being part of his funeral service was um, Mike Hubble was a part of that service. And I found out as he shared with us yesterday that uh, Daryl was very instrumental in Mike coming to know the Lord and mentoring him as he began the journey into ministry. And I thought it was so interesting that uh, he told that when he found he was coming to Sweetwater as your pastor a few years ago, Mike said that uh, he was excited when he found out this was the church that Daryl and Betty Williams were at. And so he got to be part of the, uh, the service uh, I thought was very appropriate for that. And to think of all the lives that Daryl has touched through his ministry. So uh, be in prayer for Betty and for her children. Um, Mitch and Gail and for their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Let's go to God in prayer at this time. God, we thank you for your ever-present help throughout our lives. We thank you that you are one that we can rely on to be with us no matter what we're going through. And we thank you that on this first Sunday of a new year, we can be here to honor you and to praise you for all that you have blessed us with. Continue to work your way and your will in the hearts and lives of people here and every place. Be with those who are sick this day. And be with those who have lost loved ones be with those who are searching for answers to life's questions. Continue to pour out your spirit upon your church and bless your church here and in every place. That she might be strengthened for service to this world. Be with our nation and our leaders and the leaders of the world. May there be peace on earth as the angels sang about at the birth of your son. Hear our prayers as we make them in the name of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as he taught us to pray, we say together, 
our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm amazed week after week how the music comes together with what I'm preaching. 
Because I don't tell Margaret a whole lot about what I'm thinking. I just give her my scripture and my title. And she somehow prays through it. And uh, she usually gives me some indication of where she's going musically during the week to see that it's suitable to me. But uh, I have never found reason to object. And uh, the music today has just made me um, so thankful. For here we are at the beginning of a new year. There's many things that we could uh, talk about at the beginning of a new year. The scripture that I have chosen for today comes from the lectionary text for New Year's Eve and Watch Night. Old Methodists back in the old days of John Wesley uh, spent a lot of time in watch night services where they would pray the new year into being and um, watch you know as the time as the time passed they did not do that in a time of idleness they did it in a time of prayer and a time of scripture reading and preaching and uh, there was one particular instance that I've read about in John Wesley's life when he and Charles his brother and and some of the other uh, early Methodists were together that they said somewhere uh, long about midnight or a little bit later that the Holy Spirit fell upon them with such power that um, their souls were revived. Uh, that is my prayer for the church throughout the United States this year is that the Holy Spirit would fall upon us once again. We are living in some very tough times. This past year has been a tremendously tumultuous year, a time of struggle. We've gone from one struggle to another throughout the year. And if we had known January 1 last year what we were facing, I wonder if we would have stayed a little closer to the altar but um, think about all we experienced this past year. And then I want you to think about this. From out of all the Lord has brought us to this place. And we are facing a new year. With that in mind, I want to share with you this scripture from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 13. Ecclesiastes is not a book that we go to often. You won't find much devotional literature written on Ecclesiastes. In fact, I did a Bible study on Ecclesiastes in one particular church I was at, and I didn't think they were ever going to come back to my Bible studies again. Uh, Ecclesiastes is a little bit depressing. But this particular passage is one that has been inspiring the generations. And if you uh, lived through the 1960s, you might remember a song that was based upon this passage. And if you start singing it while I'm preaching on it, then go right ahead. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love 
and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business of God that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for your presence in the reading and the hearing of your word. May we in these moments be inspired once again to serve you with newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the things that is interesting about being a Methodist minister is that every once in a while you have to move. You have to go from place to place, and you get an opportunity when you do that to kind of start over. And um, over the years, we've kind of gotten professionals at moving. We know all about it. You know, we, we've got it to where we know what rooms to put boxes in and how to get your stuff out of your boxes and put it where you need to and how to pack it away when it's time to pack away and, and do all that kind of stuff. And um, there's still something about all the stuff that we have when it goes to a new place with us. We, there's kind of a feeling of renewal because it looks different in a different place. And though we're the same people as we go from place to place, God has a tendency to renew us when we start over in a new place. We're all in that place right now where we're starting over in a new year. The calendar has changed, and, um, you know, those old calendars aren't worth anything once, once you're finished living those days. Um, I see calendars in antique stores, and I think sometimes, why would anybody want a calendar from 1943 or 1958 unless that's the year that you were born you might want to look and see what the year looked like in in that particular year but uh, a new calendar always reminds us that we're turning over a new leaf we're turning over into a new era and we have needed that more I think this year than we have in several previous years but this is a time of transition, a time that we can look forward uh, to a lot of things that um, may bring some healing and some hope to us from the things that we experienced in the past year. A year ago, there was no vaccine for coronavirus. Now there's at least two approved, another on the way, it looks like. They're now saying that maybe by June, possibly, there may be enough people vaccinated that we can begin to start feeling normal again. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be cool to kind of go back to something like normal? Uh, by then, we may have been abnormal so long that we don't know what normal is. But um, we look forward to the day that we can gather without masks and without fear of the spreading of disease. Some people say masks may not go away. Uh, so we'll see. But um, there will be an end to the coronavirus. We don't know what else may face us in the days to come, but there will be an end to that. We have uh, lived through a very tumultuous election year. Try not to say much about elections in the pulpit. Um, people have different ways of thinking about them, but 
I think I can say this. Uh, we're kind of glad that's over. <laughs> uh, maybe, if, if it's over. Uh, at least uh, it's good when we get beyond the formality of election day. No matter how it turns out, there's always the next one, right? They're already beginning to think about who will run in 2024. Uh, I don't know whether the Lord will let us live that long. And we need to be thinking in terms of thank you, Lord, for this day. And um, so disease and politics, the tumult of the outcry of racism in our country, um, that's been unsettling, has it not? Um, we continue to see things that need improvement in our nation and our world. And we've heard of death of folks who folks who have died of coronavirus, folks who have died of old age, folks who have just died unexpectedly throughout this year reminding us of the truth that there is a time to be born and a time to die reminding us that uh, the Bible says that it is appointed once for a man to die and afterwards the judgment and uh, we stand um, in that place of realizing our mortality we don't want to talk about it but we know it's a fact. 2020 has reminded us in many ways of that. And 2021 is here. We don't know if um, this year will be as good a year as we hope for it to be. Um, this morning in the first service, I stepped away from where I was standing <laughs> to say, I, I, maybe I should do that here. I don't want to stand in the pulpit and say this. 2021 could be worse <laughs> than 2020. <laughs> All right? Let me get back over here. I hope it's not. But we have no guarantees, do we? We do have this. When we look back upon it, there was not one moment of 2020 when God was not with us not one he did not fail to be with us through the entirety of all that was 2020 the good and the bad the ugly and the beautiful and I believe because of that we can rely upon him to be with us going into 2021 regardless of what we may face this year some of us may face hardships. Some of us may face things that are unexpected. For some of us, this may be a glorious year. This may be a good year. But whatever kind of year it is, we still need God in our lives. Scripture reminds us of that. The Bible is filled with information about God this is where we get our information about who God is and what God is like one of the old doctrinal statements that we say about scripture in the church is that scripture containeth everything necessary for salvation which is to say that there's nothing outside of this book that we need to be saved because within it, we find everything we needed to know about God and what God has done and who God is and what God is bringing to human beings. And the beauty of the Scripture is even though it's hard to read sometimes, as we open it and as we read it, we find that the Scripture is not something that we read by ourselves. Even if you're alone when you read it, the Holy Spirit is with us when we read God's Word. It is Holy Spirit inspired. The book of Timothy says that it is all Scripture is inspired by God or God breathed. 
and is good for edification of the church. So when we read it, God is with us, even if we're alone reading it. There's a place in the book of Acts that talks about a fellow who was trying to read the scripture, and one of the early disciples comes up to him and asks him what he's reading, and he tells him, I'm reading the Bible. He tells him what part. I think it was Isaiah. And he said, uh, I'm having a hard time understanding it. And that disciple began to help him understand it. I'm glad that story is in the scripture because it tells us that sometimes we need to rely upon each other to understand what the scripture says. That's why we have Bible study. That's why we come together to talk about and, and, um, and uh, see if we can understand the scriptures better. The Bible is what we base our life upon. It's the bedrock, the foundation of our civilization. A lot of folks today have a hard time understanding the Scripture. Its claims seem to be outdated to some in the modern world. But God is never outdated. If we go and we listen to what the Scripture says, we'll find that God is very aware of the things that we're going through. There's nothing, as Ecclesiastes says, there's nothing new under the sun. Every generation's going through the same things that we go through. And so when Solomon in his wisdom wrote, being inspired by the Holy Spirit, these words about all these different times that we go through, we realize that life is a series of seasons and moments. Some moments are good moments, and some moments are bad moments. Some moments are about building up, others are about tearing down. But in spite of what moment we're in, God is in our moments, and God walks with us as we go through life. Some of the commentators about church life have been talking a lot about how we have uh, made some strides in this past year in spite of the challenges that we've had. The coronavirus and sheltering in place have forced us to learn how to do some things that we haven't always done. For instance, when I was growing up, uh, you know, they used to teach Bible lessons in the schools. You remember that? Does anybody remember those days? There was a guy that used to come to my school. Yeah, he went to all the schools in my county with the most cutting-edge technology of the 1960s and 70s, the flannel board. Remember the flannel board? Had these little cut-out characters that you could stick on there. And he would tell these stories of the scriptures using these cut-out characters. I was fascinated. I was glued to it. You know, for one thing, it meant I didn't have to listen to the math lesson or the English lesson that day. But for the other thing was it, you know, he, he was telling a story, and his stories are fascinating. Well, in like measure, we have learned through coronavirus time that there's technology that we could have been using that we weren't using. And we kind of all had to be forced into using it. And now we live stream our services and try to make sure that they're available. Uh, commentators are watching this and seeing the trends and they're talking about uh, how people are doing at using these things. And they, they have said that, you know, there for the first few weeks after the shelter in place orders, um, live streaming numbers were just up exponential it looked like it was the it was going to help us it's going to be the future of the church but then as summer came you know people kind of go back in their old patterns don't they as summer came we went into a summer slump numbers started going away 
than even after we started in-person services. The numbers didn't get a whole lot better. They just sort of stagnated. And so we're not sure what's going on. One of the things that they're saying is happening is that there are people who have just absolutely decided to drop out of church. And we may never see them again. They're saying when things go back to normal, they uh, fear that uh, something like 20 to 40 percent of the crowds that we had pre-COVID may not be back. We may have to try to win them again. We don't know what's going to happen. It's not easy. Life's not easy, is it? It may be those 20 to 40 percent may watch from home or from wherever they are. One of the nice things about a recorded service is if you don't like the sermon, you can fast forward through it. <laughs> don't do that now. But um, we're thankful that God's given us that technology. There'll be other things that will come along for other things that have come along in the past. And as a church, we have to figure out what's going on. When all this coronavirus and all this other thing is over with, when we get to that place where we can begin to do things like we have always done them, I really pray that the church will seek revival I pray that God will bring his spirit upon the church once again. Maybe even before we get to that point, I think God can enliven us by his spirit even when we are working under the kinds of conditions that we're working under. Because God is about bringing healing and hope into a lost and dying world. And our world needs healing and hope today, probably more than we've ever known it to need it. So our world needs God. And one of the things that I would ask of you as we go into 2021 is to join me in praying for the work of the church. Someone a few weeks ago stood outside my office in the corridor down the hall here and made a statement of faith that has really stuck with me. They said they believe this coming year will be a landmark year in the history of First United Methodist Church of Sweetwater. Now, I was thinking to myself as they said that, yeah, but we've got all this stuff <laughs> that's keeping us back, all these things we can't do. But as I meditated upon what she said, I thought, she's right. This can be a landmark year in our church. If we as God's people dedicate ourselves anew to being his disciples his children allow his spirit to work within us do the things that we need to do such as continue to grow in our faith in our understanding of him in our prayer life in our worship life doing acts of kindness and mercy to all those around us, I believe as we do that, God will bring renewal and revival to his church. Now because of the protocol we're under, I'm not supposed to call you to the altar of the church because we could get ourselves sick up here. But do you know we can have an altar wherever we are it's about what goes on between our heart and God. So I do call you to a rededication of your life, to a renewal of your relationship with Jesus Christ. 
and to a commitment to pray for the work of the church. No great thing has happened in the church in the history of Christianity that did not start with people praying. And I pray that we will come together in prayer and pray that God will use us and that one day the people of Sweetwater will be scratching their heads saying, I wonder what happened up there at the Methodist Church that turned them on so. Because I do believe people will know it when the church gets revived. The hearts and lives of everybody will be affected. So that's my prayer for our new year. I want to call you to prayer at this time. Will you pray? Gracious God, we thank you for a new year. We thank you that you have placed the past behind us and you have placed the future before us and you are with us in the present. May we dedicate ourselves to you this day to a renewal of faith and conviction, to serving the world with the love with which we have been loved. Renew your church. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I think it's appropriate we're going to close this service with a resurrection hymn, the hymn of promise. Let's stand as we sing. When it comes to this Sunday next year, I would love to be able to say that we use 2021 as a time to grow in our faith and our love for the Lord Jesus Christ. May that be so of us. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. And all God's children everywhere said, Amen. Amen.